Hello everyone, I am Chelsea Jackson and today with me I have Miss Juliana Richardson, the founder and executive producer of The History Makers. Thanks. First I want to welcome you to our university. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for being here. So The History Makers is the nation's largest uh, video archive of African American oral history. So my question is, it started 17 years ago. What was the goal? and what was your vision? You had to have a vision. So what was your goal in starting the History Makers? When I started, I wanted to create the largest repository in the world about the black experience. Um, and I wanted to do that with people talking about their own stories. And I had to choose whether I was going to do it on audio cassette tape or if I was going to have video like you have here. And I chose video because I wanted people to see what people really look like so they wouldn't have to imagine. Yes, ma'am. So what do you want, how would you like history to evaluate the significance of your work? I hope um, that history will say that there was this, um, this, you know, black, black woman who had been a, a, a young person who felt really lost about who she was as a black person and that she dreamed of something and made it happen and that it will live on for generations. That's what I hope. Mm -hmm. So could you tell us about how many people have you had the opportunity to interview? Yeah, we've now, not me, m myself, but the organization has interviewed now 3,000. Wow, mm -hmm. 3,000. 3,180 cities and towns across the United States. and. Even we, um, the Norwegian government flew us to Norway to interview the 94-year-old Anne Brown, mm -hmm. who was the first Best and Poor Game Best on Broadway. Wow. So I read that you have about 9,000 hours of recorded first-person testimonies. Mm -hmm. So I know that it has to be a lot of work that goes into these collections. When I looked on the website, I saw about 15 different categories, whether it was art, Edu um, excuse me, entertainment, law, music, etc. So how do you go about composing who works for you? Okay, <clears throat> so someone who works for me has to work really hard right. um, and be committed to the project because it is a lot of work and we're a very small organization. People are often surprised at what we're able to do with such a small staff. So, um, so I think work, I think um, people who are detailed oriented, because that's important. Writing and research are really important to us. And, and I think people who can handle multiple projects. So the uh, recollection of your collection goes to date as far as 1700, the 1700s. Um, is there anyone that you would like to include in your collection? So the memories go back to the 1700s because I'm really fascinated, and I'll answer your question about who I would like, but I'm really fascinated with the 1700s myself because it was before the entrenchment of the antebellum South. It's when slavery was a Northern tradition as much as a Southern tradition, which I think is important because the North gets off too much as if they didn't do anything and didn't engage in slavery when, when the slave trade was alive and well in the 1700s. <clears throat> so I'm interested in that. In terms of um, who we would, so the recollections go back, that that's mm -hmm. people's memories, because really at the same time that we had the, you know, the Revolutionary War, um, it was the same story that blacks were told by the British, that they would be left with, you know, land, and then the mm -hmm. British never did it. So that, that happens to be our story time and time again. But, <clears throat> but we still persevere and make it. But in terms of who I would like to, um, to, to interview that I haven't, um, we haven't done Morley Evers. We haven't done Michelle Obama. We did the president when he was um, an Illinois state senator, but we need to go back and do him as president. Um, there are there was um, there was a woman uh, we didn't get to do Leon Sullivan, who had been very active with the freedom of South Africa and so Southern the um, Sullivan principles. There was a woman in Alaska 
that it worked on the Alaska pipeline, but we lost her. But I would, you know, so we're interested in other narratives and stories like we did the oldest living black cowboy, Alonzo Petty, before mm -hmm. he passed away. So we're interested in, you know, I, I'm interested also, um, which was supposed to be a part of our project, that we start doing younger people. And so we, the youngest we've done is, was a prima ballerina. Um, we haven't done Misty Copeland yet, but we hope to do her interview. But we're trying to come down, and the narratives are a little different too, which is sort of you know interesting to me. Well, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with Miss Juliana Richardson right after this. You feel it from the moment you enter our campus. It's a legacy of greatness. We are the Golden Lion family, committed to innovation and truth. We all come from different places, but now call the Pride Lands home. Whether it's the sciences, arts, or business, we're shaping the minds that one day will reshape the world. The University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Become a part of the Pride. My name is Chelsea Jackson, and I do have Ms. Juliana Richardson, the founder and executive producer of The History Makers. So one question I did want to ask is, you started this 17 years ago. Is The History Makers anywhere near what you would imagine it to be when you first started? You know, uh, Chelsea, there were times when I wasn't sure that we would even survive, you know, because we've had some really lean years. But the fact is that we are getting to where um, if we can get the content out and people can use it, it will, it will exceed my dreams in many ways because I, um, you don't work this hard if people can't use it. And I really want people like yourself to be able to have access to it. You know, so you can learn what I've learned. Because when I have, when you look on this side of the black community, you see just an amazing, amazing people that I don't think we know enough about ourselves. Now it's a little, little limited in schools now when they only talk about slavery or they don't go into detail as to the greatness that the African American community does have. So I'm glad that you know you took your time to come up with their collection. You know, because I knew that, that it was like that when I was in school. Mm -hmm. What was, you know, I've just been starting to talk again to young people like yourself and and then I'm learning that it's still that way and that is that's ridiculous. It and is. so we really all need to work to change it. And and the thing is is that we're bringing a new technology. We've brought a new technology so it's all video and that's what your generation uses. And, and then you, you know, all kinds of things will be able to be done with it. So now I noticed, Ms. Richardson, that there have been several academic institutions that are now housing the history makers. I just want to know, like, how does that feel to have the University of Chicago or Harvard or Bendice, Brandeis, excuse me, university to house the history makers, how does that make you feel? Oh, you have no idea how that makes <laughs> me feel. Um, it, it makes me feel really wonderful because I, first of all, the university signed up, Howard University being the first, mm -hmm. and today we just found out that University of Arkansas Pine Bluff is going to sign that up, so we're amazing. really excited about that. But. Um, it happened in such a short period of time. Because we've been putting money out, we've never had a revenue stream, and it's cost us $17 million to build wow. it. 
And, and so the fact is, is that people get in and they see, you know, everyone takes something away from it, a different use for it than I anticipated. There's one school, well, it's a high school in, in North Carolina that was using it to teach vocabulary and context, and we never even thought about that. So okay. it's going to be anything that people want it to be. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you said that the university, my university, is going to be housing the history makers. That's amazing to hear. So I just want to know, as far as getting, becoming housed with the history makers, how does one do that? Is it on so, you? So, so what happens is that it, the library will work in tandem with the library, but you as a student will be able to even have it on your phone. Really? Yes. It'll be totally remote access. Mm if the university allows that so you can use it wherever you know in the library on your laptop or on your phone wow that is amazing mm -hmm. well miss richardson i want to thank you for your time and your interview i i'm completely i'm honored to be here with you and um thank you would thank you like you. to say anything yes chelsea i want to ask you you know we always in our interviews with legacy so i want to change the the, the change the seat. So what do you want your legacy to be? I want my legacy to be someone known as someone who worked hard, went, went after my goals. I want a legacy that continues to inspire other individuals, young ladies, to keep going, to never give up. I want my legacy to live on for a long, very long time. I just want everyone to be inspired to never give up. That's just my main goal for my legacy. Well, thank you. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank See, you. you may be being interviewed by us at one point. I would love to. Okay, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> thank you so much.